Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a joy it is to be here today, especially because we are confirming two of our finest. Every year we confirm some of our finest. Our parents brought us to the baptism font and they promised that they would raise these children to grow up in the faith, that they would teach them about what our faith means, and then when they reach that age of accountability, when some other churches are baptizing their kids, they confirm the baptismal vows of their parents, that they agree and they will live under that grace of God. We don't see confirmation as a laying hands on by the pastor or by other people as the thing that does the work. What does the work are these young people, two years stuck in a classroom with me, not an easy thing, two hours at a time. And we go over the basic tenets of our Christian faith and how that relates to one another. And we have a wonderful text to go along with Confirmation Sunday. Jesus is speaking to the people on the Last Supper. It's a lengthy discourse. And he says to them that if you love me, you will obey me or you will keep my commandments, as the translation of the ESV has. The Greek word is tereo, and it means to obey or keep. Now, some of you might know that you've been forced to obey things that you haven't agreed with. Can I hear an amen from our kids? Amen. Struggling at home with all those oppressive rules that our parents put on us, like don't play that music so loud. Is that still a thing? Or now you all have headphones, right? It's not a stereo anymore. Things have changed since my day. You can obey things, but not really be too fond of the rule enforcer. That's not what Jesus has in mind. Jesus says that if you love me, and you cannot separate these two things from one another. You cannot separate the part of loving Christ from holding dear to his teachings. And that's what Tereo really means. If you love me, you will want to do the things that I am putting out to do, that you will want to be a part of my greater mission in the world, that you will want to embrace my teachings of grace and love and mercy and compassion. If you love me, it's a, it's a subjunctive verb in the present tense, which means that it's an ongoing thing. So it's not like you just love them once and now you're having a little spat and you're mad at Jesus. It means that you will ongoingly love Jesus and you'll have this relationship with him. You see, it's not about a bunch of rules. He said, if you will keep my commandments. Now, what are the commandments of Jesus? What does Jesus command us? What? Love one another. What else? To not what? Steal. Yeah, that's one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Okay, we're getting to the first commandment here. Honor your parents. Honor God. What? No other gods before us. Do not envy. Keep the Sabbath day. We're going through the commandments. Now, is the commandment the same thing as the Torah? It is not. Remember, in John chapter eight, the Jewish leaders caught this woman in adultery and brought her to Jesus and said. The law of Moses says, Stoner, what do you say? Remember the story? Was she stoned or not? See, Jesus takes the law and puts it under mercy. And that's what he's asking us to do too. It's not just about a rote bunch of rules and regulations. God is not some kind of cosmic killjoy sitting up in heaven with a lightning bolt waiting to smash us every time we take a step out of line. Rather, he is a loving father that embraces us in our mistakes and calls us out to be his, to be his people, the people of his pasture. He is the good shepherd. He tells us to love our enemies like I expressed to the children here. Loving our enemies, it doesn't do any good if I have warm feelings 
about someone, if I'm not living that out in my life. And that's what God is asking us to do, is to do something beneficial for them. That's how we express our love. And isn't that what Christ did for us? He's not asking us to do anything that he hasn't done for himself. The Bible teaches us that while we were still sinners, amen? Amen. We were still sinners that God gave his son to die for us. We were enemies of God. And yet in God's great love, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to embrace us, to make us his own, to gather us in to his kingdom while we were still sinners. And God calls on us to live out that kind of life, to hold his teachings dear. You see, it's not just about a bunch of rules. It's about a relationship. Jesus comes and he says that if you do these things, my father and I will come and make our home with you. Isn't that a beautiful promise? That God will make his home with us? Reminds me of Revelation chapter 3 when Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my knock and opens the door, I'll come in to them and dine with them. That's the relationship that Jesus is looking for. It's the thing that has to happen first, is we have that relationship and the rest of the stuff just comes into place. You can't beat somebody over the head with the Ten Commandments and the Bible into submission to loving God. It just doesn't work. Now the Holy Spirit, well, we're gonna need some help loving everybody, right? I mean, does anybody know anybody that's tough to love? It reminds me of the story about the guy that gets up and he says his prayer. Dear God, so far I haven't been mean to anyone. I haven't sworn. I haven't used any foul language. I haven't gossiped. I haven't stolen. But pretty soon I'm going to get out of bed. And then I'm really going to need your help. And that's what God gives us. He gives us the paraclete. That's a Greek word for, it's been translated a whole bunch of different ways. It's not a little yellow bird. That's a parakeet. (laughs) And it's not a pair of shoes with spikes on the bottom. That's a pair of cleats. It's the Holy Spirit. It's been described as the comforter. It's been described as the helper. It's been described as a number of different things. But I love the word helper because we do need help. But the question is, Who does the Holy Spirit help, us or Jesus? Us? Jesus? Both of us. Yeah, I think it, it, I always used to think it's for us, but the Holy Spirit is to remind us of all the things that Jesus taught us. So it's just the ongoing presence of Jesus in the world. You see, if Jesus wouldn't have died and gone to heaven, he was in a human form. He couldn't have been everywhere all at once, but he died, he ascended to heaven, and he sent his spirit to be with us everywhere, all at the same time. And that spirit reminds us of everything that he taught. And you thought the Holy Spirit was a lot more exciting than that, right? A lot of people kind of teach it that way. A lot of people think it's, it's, it's this crazy uh, emotional feeling where you come up and you get the holy laughter and you get slain in the spirit and you get all of those things. But the Holy Spirit's purpose is to remind us of what Christ did because that's where our salvation lies. It lies in the cross, what Jesus did for us. And we need to be reminded that. We need to be reminded that it's because Christ loves us. Now, I don't know if any of you do any self-evaluation or introspection, but I usually go over my day at the end of the day, and I think, Where, what have I done well, and what have I done not so well, and what have I done so poorly that I need to make amends for? I go over my day, and there's usually, you know, usually there's some stuff that I did well and some things that I didn't do so well, but I need help with that. I need strength for that. And I get that from the word of God, I get that from our sacraments, and I get that from that wonderful paraclete, that helper, that, that thing that comes alongside me. I, I heard a story once that kind of describes it. It was a small town in Iowa was going to host a uh, piano concert by the famous Paterucci. 
It was the event of the town's history. Everybody was in their Sunday best. The, the, stadium, the, the, the auditorium was packed. The piano was on the stage, spotlight shining on it. And while everybody was waiting for Paterucci to come out, this little five-year-old boy broke away from his mother, got up on the stage, and started pounding out chopsticks. Bum, 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 bum. The people started going, what's that brat doing up there? Aren't his, parent, his parents should be called to order for this. So get him off of the stage. Well, Paterucci saw what was going on. And without a word of introduction, without putting on his jacket, he ran out and put his arms around the little boy playing chopsticks and played this beautiful counter melody to that simple tune of chopsticks. And he whispered into the little boy's ear, don't stop, keep playing, don't stop. Is that true or not? I don't know, but it's a great illustration for this sermon. I didn't make it up. Did somebody? I can't tell you for sure. But it's a beautiful picture of what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. The Holy Spirit comes and takes our little efforts that we might put out, and he plays this incredibly beautiful counter melody to them. And he whispers in our ear, don't stop. Keep going, keep playing, I'm with you. I will take your ordinary and make it into something extraordinary. And that's what God does. God specializes in taking our ordinary and making it extraordinary. So how do we know if we have that wonderful little yellow bird, the paraclete? Number one, if we claim the promise of our baptism because we're baptized in word and spirit. Number two, if we Give ourselves up to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, this is a hard thing. We've got to, uh, the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin and bring us into the knowledge that we are under judgment of a holy God, a perfect God. So it needs to convict us. We call that our conscience. The Bible tells us that God has written his law in the hearts and minds of all people. The Holy Spirit will bring us into remembrance of that, but he doesn't leave us there. Remember how I said, that he takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. He also helps us to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that Jesus Christ came on this earth as a perfect lamb that died to take away our sin. So even though we are sinners and under judgment that Christ took our sins upon himself, can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah. Let me hear it like you believe it. Hallelujah. That was good enough. At this I'll say... Amen. And may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.